The internet is refashioning societies through the making of new relations between people and technologies. It's also through these relations that citizens of the internet are coming into being. What then does it mean to have an inclusive internet that's shaped by and for citizens? I think this issue is really critical because at the moment, the internet is a site of intense struggle between it as a site of profit and control versus one of connectivity and openness. I came to address the struggle over some 10 years of research into the possibilities of the internet as a space of citizen digital rights. For example, in my current ERC project, I'm studying government experiments with internet data as a possible new source of knowledge about people and populations. I'm really interested in how those experiments raise concerns about how people varyingly participate in the making and shaping of that data and the consequences that this has for interpretation, for meaning, and for data rights. I approach these concerns by considering how people have historically demanded data rights through actions such as claiming new identity categories on censuses or demanding data confidentiality. And I argue through such actions they perform as citizens. How then might we think about how people are performing or acting through the internet and claiming rights about the data that they're part of making? Well, a lot of social science research suggests that people just don't use the internet as it is designed, but rather they perform as citizens by shaping what it ought to be. And furthermore, they don't just do this through their words, such as appeals for data protection, but also through their digital actions. I think fostering those kinds of claims and actions is key to ensuring digitally inclusive societies ones that are not divisive and controlling. It means providing openings for people to perform as citizens and make claims about the space and shaping it and the data that it generates. Now, this proposition is different from the talk about a digital divide. I mean, that's fine, but access doesn't mean active participation. Rather, it means empowering people to shape what the internet is. It means providing freedoms for acting democratically. Now, let's consider people who have crossed the so-called digital divide. Um, consider women, for instance, who participate but have been trolled and have then demanded the right to participate free of harassment. That is, through their experiences and claims, they have come to shape the internet, and it is responsiveness to those claims that makes it inclusive. In this example and others, we see that the internet is not just passively experienced. Rather, people perform as citizens by challenging and changing the very workings, rules, and conventions of the internet. And also through doing so, I argue that they also become part of shaping what we, what we can call as digital societies. What I mean by that is that the internet doesn't just connect us across geographies and cultures. It also is part of forming, reforming, and bringing new groups into being. We can think of a lot of examples of groups that have formed around political, social, health, and other kinds of issues and interests. In this way of thinking, people uh, are not separate from the technologies that make up the internet, nor are their identities or relations forged independently of it. Rather, the internet is part of who they are and part of the societies that they forge. I think we can uh, consider a lot of different examples of how people have had um, especially experiences with social media platforms for intense collaboration, engaging in political participation, making things happen, et cetera. What's really interesting is that the way that they do this and the things that they've made happen were not originally intended by those platforms, but that's what they became through the actions of citizens. So what I've learned by this is that the claims of citizens can be considered as rights claims. Downloading documents, the right to share, um, encrypting communications, the right to privacy, or refusing cookies, the right to anonymity. These acts say something about digital rights, about the internet and the data that it generates. In this way, we can consider the internet as merely provisional. It does come alive and it happens through the actions of people who are not just users or consumers of the internet. Rather, they perform as citizens by shaping what it is and what it could be through their inventive actions. So if indeed the internet is creating a space for societies to invent and reinvent themselves, as well as new knowledge about them, then I think the challenge is how citizens can be empowered to perform in digitally inclusive ways. And that's the message I want to leave with you today in terms of thinking about what could make and what makes a digitally inclusive internet. Thank you.